Okay. Um, so, uh, a new result, new important fact uh, about convex functions uh, to fascinate you further. Um, this is something that's useful. Um, so, a, a way to diagnose convexity. Um, basically, by saying if you can calculate the Hessian of a function, um, uh, and if that Hessian is positive definite, we've talked about it in a previous vi uh, video, uh, then that function is, is convex. So we've already talked about how convex functions lie above their tangents. Um, and where we're going now uh, is we can use that uh, to prove something, uh, you know, a, a diagnostic tool, um, a way to figure out if a given function is convex rather than having to use a the theorem or to, um, uh, to calculate every tangent plane to the function um, and show that the function lies above all of them. Here's a, a theorem that says, so long as the second partial derivative of f exists, uh, then f is uh, convex or strictly convex um, if and only if uh, the Hessian is positive definite. So if the Hessian is positive definite, the function um, uh, is strictly convex, uh, or if uh, the function is strictly convex, uh, then the Hessian is positive definite. And the same for positive se semi-definite, just remembering that they're sort of the same, uh, they're, they're only different by a greater than or equal to sign. So let's uh, put, prove this in the forward direction uh, first. It's another if and only if statement, so we've got to go in both directions. Uh, but here's how the forward direction works. Um, so I'll talk about the, um, uh, the, strictly, uh, the strictly convex. Uh, uh, version of this, maybe. Um, so here's Taylor's theorem, right? So all, we're, all the way through with these um, convex functions, um, I'm thinking about this you know, uh, x plus t times some, uh, some new vector. Um, so some object here, you know, this is going to be uh, y minus x uh, a lot of the times for us. So here's an expansion uh, of my function, you know, around a point uh, x. Uh, and I've just uh, done the usual thing, uh, and I've written out one term, and then chucked uh, everything else into the remainder, into a remainder term. So that's you know, some uncertain z that you know, sits there. So, okay, um, why have I done this? Well, it's because you know, I want to say something about the Hessian, right? Like I'm trying to use the fact that my function is convex uh, to prove something about the Hessian, that the Hessian of this function is, um, is positive definite. So this is a good place, to, a good way to introduce the Hessian um, into um, some analysis of my function. Okay, so in the forward direction, uh, so assuming that my function is convex, I can write this out, and then actually I can just rearrange things here. You know, I'm interested uh, in the Hessian being positive definite, which means I'm really interested in this term here. So let's actually just make that the subject. So let's uh, write. Uh, times u, right? You know that is exactly um, that's the exact. I want to prove that this is positive, or greater than or equal to uh, zero um, here. So let's actually make that the make that the subject. So let's put everything else over onto the other side. So this is going to be uh, two over t squared, uh, and then I'm going to get f of x. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to get f of x plus t u. Right, subtract that, subtract that. So literally all I've done there is I've written out Taylor's theorem um, to one term, it's as far as you ever need to go uh, with Taylor's, uh, with the Taylor series, um, and then I've rearranged it to make this thing that looks a lot like um, the, the definition of positive definiteness, the, um, the subject. Now, if I take the limit of both sides here uh, as t approaches zero, right, and we'll have t t's always positive, so it approaches from there, um, from above, right. Well, if I take the limits of both sides, I mean, there's no t on that side, so I don't even need to write that out there. Right? That's a constant, no matter what t is. And if I think about um, the right-hand side, then what I've got here is something that looks an awful lot uh, like the definition of convexity, right? So if my function f is convex, being convex means that that thing there um, is larger than that thing, right? So um, it exactly means that f of x plus tu is greater than f of x plus t 
uh, uh, u transpose gradient of f, f of x. So that whole object is positive, right? So no matter, um, uh, you know, as t gets uh, close to zero, well, this goes towards, um, this goes towards zero, uh, of course, but it's always positive because that is bigger uh, than the sum of those two terms there by convexity. So this, regardless of what t is, is greater than zero. Right? Actually, I can even do a little bit. Uh, I think I can even uh, do a little bit more here. Um, uh, yeah, well, actually, to make it a, bit, a little bit clearer, um, if I put y equals x uh, plus tu, there's a little bit of a counting. You know, what's that u? Uh, so long as I, I set u to be equal to this object here, um, then that's the, literally the, de the, um, the definition of convexity, and so we've got that. So this is always greater than uh, zero, uh, which uh, means positive, um, which means this is positive definite. I've been pa saying positive definite throughout, but I mean positive semi-definite because I've got a greater than or equal to sign there. That's a minor thing. So that's the, um, that's the quote unquote easy direction in that I only need to plot multivariate Taylor series and then taking the limit of something and writing out this nasty thing. Um, going back in the other direction. So here I'm going to assume, um, uh, I'm going to assume this. I'm going to assume that u transpose uh, h, f, z, u is greater than zero uh, for all u, right? So that's what it means to be positive semi-definite. Positive semi-definite. We'll call that equation star because I'll use it in a sec. Now let's. Um, so what I need to prove here, uh, uh, we need to show uh, that f of x is convex. That's what the, um, the alternate direction means. So I'm going to need to uh, write something that looks like the definition. Uh, of convexity in this, or it looks like a convex function. So the trick here um, is to write down uh, a function that we sort of write down all the time. Right, is to define that, um, is to define that function. So when I've been proving things uh, before, I've defined g of t to be equal to this thing. Uh, and that's because this is really useful because um, as t varies between uh, 0 and 1, uh, this function varies between uh, being f of x um, up to being uh, f of y. Uh, so when t is equal to 0, it's x. And when t is equal to 1, I've written down it written down wrong again. Right, when t is equal to 1, that's equal to f of y. So this um, uh, defines my function. And it's a nice one variable function. So because this is a, a one variable function, I can differentiate it. I've differentiated it before uh, when I've derived this. And what you get when you differentiate it twice um, is you get uh, this, um, this object. Uh, well, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get y minus x uh, transpose. Uh, times the Hessian of this function. Uh, and then times uh, that, y minus x. We get that. Uh, and now what this means, so if I call... Um, so let's compare what we've got here with this object, right, the, our positive definite thing. Uh, if I let z be equal to that, and if I let u be equal to y minus x, right, and let's also let z be equal to the garbage inside f there. So it's just, so z's a point between, uh, between x and y. If we let those things happen, uh, then I get that g of t uh, is equal to u transpose h f of z uh, times u. 
right? And that's greater than, and that's positive by the assumption of um, uh, positive definiteness. Now, we're actually done at this point because um, I've actually proved that this is uh, this function is convex because the way that I set this up, you know, this is a one vari this is a one D function, right? That's a normal um, scalar function like we've talked about, um, you know, since first year, right? It's a function only of this uh, of this parameter t. And so what I've just shown is that I've shown for a scalar function, the second derivative of that function um, is greater than zero, is positive. And if the second derivative um, is positive, then that means uh, that this is a com that g of t, my one variable function here, um, is uh, a convex function. Right? That's what it means to be, you know, it's a concave up, so it's actually a convex function. Um, and so that, we're actually done. Uh, with that. So because um, by one variable calculus, um, this has shown that G uh, is convex, that means that this object here uh, is convex um, as well. So F is convex uh, on this convex set C. Whew. Proved in both directions. Excellent. So that's our theorem. And we should do a little bit of an example. So here is a, uh, here is a function. Uh, and I'd like to know whether this function uh, is convex or not, because I'm going to do optimization with it. Um, and as we're going to learn, we get a whole bunch of nice properties about optimization for convex functions. So it'd be great to show that this has a positive definite Hessian. So we go and calculate the Hessian, uh, and we get that. Um, so the, uh, the matrix of second derivatives looks like that. And that is a positive definite matrix. Uh, you can look back at how we did this um, a bunch of videos ago. You can either check that uh, Z transpose HZ is always positive, or you could just calculate the eigenvalues um, of that matrix and you get two positive numbers. So that uh, means that F of X uh, is convex, and that's a simple way, you know, that's a, that's a tool that we can actually use now. So now you've got a recipe um, for showing whether a given function um, is positive definite, uh, sorry, is convex or not by calculating the positive definiteness of the Hessian. So that's a, you know, that now lets you plug and chuck, right, with, um, uh, uh, with examples. And so that's the important tool here uh, that we've gotten to. Right. Um, why should we care about this? Ignore that text up there that's left over from an old slide. Um, why should you care about any of this? It's because of this very important result here, um, and this is where we're heading to in this sequence of videos. Um, this all uh, allows us to show that stationary points uh, of convex functions are global minimizers. And so that, in terms of optimization, is super important, right? So this is, this is a way um, to know when you're done with doing optimization. If you think back to all of these methods that we've talked about before, um, so you know we've talked about Newton's method uh, really recently. An issue with Newton's method is that you can find local minima, right? But you don't necessarily know when you have a global minimizer um, of a function. The great thing here is that this is a condition uh, where we can prove, uh, we can know that we found the global minimum, so you know, the ultimate minimum uh, of a function. So we can, when we converge on uh, this solution uh, for a convex function, we can know it's the, um, uh, the global minimizer, and so we can know that there are no more local minima to find anywhere, and that we've found the, um, we've fully optimized our function. So that's the last important result, uh, and that's the thing that we'll prove uh, in the next video.